I think I'm exploring a kind of a femme fatale figure in a way. The idea of kind of a homecoming or a coming back to is certainly happening in this body of work for this show. As often in my work, there's sort of a push and pull between personal or private story and kind of the universal or kind of mythological story. A lot of the action in this work takes place in my grandmother's backyard in the village where my mother was born. I think it's something that's really entrenched in, in African literature as well, that um, you know, Wole Soyinka and Chinua Achebe and certainly Ben Okri and even Bessie Head to a certain extent have in some way grappled with this character who goes and comes back and what that symbolizes on a personal level, on a kind of family level, on a political level, or even in terms of history. If people look at something and get a kind of feeling about it in the work and feel like it points at something that reminds them of something, I no longer worry about um, whether or not they're actually getting it. If you know what it feels like to sit on a chair like that, watching some people shuffling some papers about you on a desk, waiting for the answer, the yes or the no, you, then that image is packed with all the information you need, whether it's acceptance or rejection. You, you know what that is to sit in a chair like that as a woman in a suit, uh, looking at men in suits in front of a heavy desk. You know, you know what I'm saying. That piece on the side, I'm very curious how that work is gonna read. Is that rest? Is that violence? because of these questions around women's bodies, around um, access, around shame, around acceptance, and how that's all carried in our body, carried in our garments. For some time I've been thinking generally about kind of European romanticist movements in terms of painting, whether it's ideas around landscape or the vista or uh, how these kind of romantic landscapes developed alongside these ideas about territory and land from a, a colonial perspective or kind of an empire building perspective. Before moving to the Netherlands, I didn't really think too deeply about what kind of personal or even kind of research-based uh, connection I would have with this space. Being surrounded by very particular art history here, you know, with, with being kind of the home place and the birthplace of, of certain really uh, unavoidable characters. And I think I've always had sort of ongoing questions in my own practice about what it means to try to occupy that identity, even from this very different background. For so long in my practice, I've been curious about this idea of residue, what is indelible, like what remains despite kind of the rise and fall of movements or power systems or people. I want to kind of carry along all the history of the marks that I made to try to get at this thing. I think that's why I persist with erasing and kind of building and erasing, building and erasing, to kind of offer gesture and, and movement, to kind of offer a glimpse into the into the archaeology of the thing, um, but, but again, maybe also to sort of signal the cinematic, like that we're watching something still in the process of becoming. I've been really curious about simplifying my materials and, and certainly simplifying palette. There are these primary marks, hatch marks, cross-hatching, that you use to kind of build value on the page. 
and on a small scale, it's sort of invisible. And what happens when I kind of expand it to this size is that, yeah, the size of the gesture becomes much, much more prominent. I do also think that there's something about the wood grain that inadvertently directs the gesture that I make because Working against the grain is, is horrible. It's, it's a horrible feeling. Occupying a kind of liminal body, a body that's kind of partially accepted, you know, for whatever reason, cultural, gendered, political, whatever, seems to be the greatest threat to this larger system, right? That that's why it's constantly being rooted out. You'll be sorry, you know, try that, okay, go. You'll be sorry, you'll be back, you know, <laughs> you'll be sorry. The, the larger implication I think that I'm attaching to this title speaks to the impact long and short of, of history, that there is always an accumulation, whether it's injustice or of oppression, that moves itself ever slowly towards a reckoning. And I think it's tied to hope, but it's also tied to rage, you know? So the idea of a eventual balance of the thing I think is also sort of embedded in that title. Yeah, it's something about about power. And